Welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vay, Nerd Chuck, and this, my friends, is The Thunder Show, aka the internet's most passionate wine program, and we have a guest today, uh, somebody who's become quite, we've become quite friendly, yeah. and we've spent some time in front of the camera before, but never this one. Never this one, never these lights. I'm yeah, do you like these lights? I love these lights. They're scary, right? They are. They're super ghetto. They, they are definitely not set up properly. <laughs> Somebody came here like two years ago and said, put them here, and Mott and I have tripped over them. We've broken them. So I guarantee the lighting is off. Why don't you tell the uh, Vaniacs out there who you are, how we met. Tell them a little, little story about that. Uh, so I think we met. Oh, well, first tell them who you are. Oh, okay. Uh, I'm Clayton Morris. I'm from Fox News, and I do uh, the, the weekend show, The Fox and Friends, on Fox News Channel, and met Gary this summer for the first time. Yeah. And... Became a, became a rabid fan of Wine Library TV and been watching ever since. And we had you on our show. We did some stuff out on the plaza in New York City outside of Fox News Channel. And I wasn't even in that segment, unfortunately, but you and I hit it off or ended up talking in the green room for quite a bit. I wish I even remember what that segment was about. Do you remember? It, it was actually a football segment, I think. We were oh, like yeah. football tailgate. We were on chairs. We were outside. I might not even mean beating football, but... Yeah, it was preseason. We were it was cold. It was preseason. It was cold. Yeah. It was cold. We had a little setup outside for And you, then though. the second time I was on is when the the famous Snuggies episode. Right. Came yeah, we, so we we got I put Gary in a Snuggie. And maybe you've even Which seen was that. Tremendous. Yeah. You were on Oprah the other day. Yeah, I cannot believe this. So they ran the <laughs> clip, they ran this clip on Oprah of us in a Snuggie and I was running down the street in a Snuggie with my with my butt end yep. waving in the you know, mm -hmm. trying to hail a cab at one point. I was devastated that I wasn't in. I was like, "Oh my god, and do they have my clip in there?" So, no, that was really <laughs> cool. And so um, but you know what's funny? You know, that's great and I've done a lot of other things, but you're pretty darn into wine. Yeah. And well, I I wasn't a few years ago, and then my wife's family, they're huge wine fans, and I was... You call a, them, like, drunks? I call them winos. Yeah. Is that all right? Yeah. Can we call them that? Mm -hmm. And, uh... <laughs> she's here. She's here. She's all off right, the side. Go ahead. Um, so, yeah, I call them winos, and, you know, and I, when I first met her, she said, you're going to have to get educated in wine because... Or you're out. You're out, because my family, they're, they're winos. And I said, oh... Where's your family from? Orlando, Florida. Interesting. Great wine, just, great yeah, wine I mean, country. Amazing wines from Orlando, Dwight Howard. Yeah, they're Mickey fantastic. Um, uh, they're very orange. They're orange varietal. Down no, there. but but you know this was a big deal, right? Like you could not get in. You loved this woman. You mm -hmm. wanted to be in, so you need to educate yourself. I needed to educate myself, and so I was a beer guy growing mm -hmm. up. My parents had and the refrigerator was always stocked full of fantastic beers, micro brews. You name so it. they were serious about beer. They loved. It wasn't beer. like this Coors Light play. No, 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 no. It was it was all these really fantastic and micro you brews uh, in outside of Philadelphia. Okay, you're and, an Eagles uh, fan. Eagles fan, I know, and I, you got Lido Shepherd. Which is how we're going to win the Super Bowl. Now that we have the two best corners in now, the league. I know you said on a show. I'm not sure what show it was. You said that he that Eagles fan think he's thinks he's washed up. Yes. I don't agree with that. I don't think he's washed up. I mean, I I was sad to lose him. I was also sad to lose Brian Dawkins. You've lost everything. We've lost everything. Do you think we're even going to make the playoffs this year? I don't think you're going to win a game. <laughs> so, all right. So, you've got to learn about wine. I got to learn about How wine. How serious do you take this? Do you brush it off like "shut up, woman," or do you like "I'm really gonna"? Do no, because this? at that time I had started to start really enjoying wine. I started to really, yeah, absolutely, and I would never brush her off. I started really <laughs> enjoying wine. I know. Um, uh, I started loving it, mm -hmm. and and um, and I, you know, because growing up, my mom, the only glass of wine my mom would ever order would be a glass of Pinot Grigio. Right. Well, it didn't even matter what kind it was. That's all she would order. Blue bottle. Right. Whatever. It didn't matter. If, that, if we were going to have wine at a, at a restaurant, she was going to get that. That's all I knew. Of course, my mom, I love you. Don't. <laughs> if she's going to watch this, she's going to be upset. Um, now we've brought even my family along for the ride. Now they're enjoying really good wines, thanks to, thanks to my wife. So, yeah, I took it seriously. And the first time I had a cab, I was like, wow, this is way too strong. This is too much, you know? You were a little girly about it. I was a little girly about it, and I went down to some Pinots and some lighter stuff, and now I'm, I went back to the, I you went like back that. To the cabs. I like that. Now, boldness. when you walked in, how we ended up doing this show, I said, what do you want to do? Do you want me to pick the wine? I know that uh, the Pinotage that I brought to one of the segments, you, you, you liked quite a bit because I saw you tw Twitter about it. Yeah. Um, so that was a good experience. You like that wine. I really like that wine. And that's a great value play. What was it? Nine, it was like $9, yeah. $9 mm -hmm. uh, Niederberg uh, mm -hmm. Pinotage. Mm -hmm. You're, the whole show that you did on Pinotage. I mean, talk about an education. And I, and that wine is a South African wine. And I've been buying it like crazy. Mm -hmm. So I thank you for that. because I Are really you drinking a wine. bottle a night? I, no, two. <laughs> now, 
You so you brought up Willamette Valley because you guys went there right recently. And how was that trip? Great, loved it. it was, yeah, it was fantastic because I'd never gone to a winery, and so to be able to go to a winery, a bunch of wineries out there, Duck Pond, Ponzi, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, Ponzi makes some good stuff. Have? What else we do? Uh, Evergreen Four Graces, loved Four Graces. Great that was people. our favorite. Nice. And we were surprised you guys have Four Graces. Yeah, yeah. we're hardcore. Yeah. What do you think? This did you see this place? No, we were impressed. Attention? Wife said she's like, oh, I'm super impressed. Awesome. So we're serious about our yeah. wine program here. So you wanted to bring a Willamette. You guys walked downstairs. You went with Patton. I then wanted to ca- counter with a New Zealand Pinot Noir to, um, you know, just to see the differences to kind of show you maybe some stylistic differences to see what happens there. Plus, I've been wanting to try this wine. And then finally. <laughs> Your lovely wife said anything but Chardonnay, so of course yeah, you had I, to, I brought a Chardonnay. You had to bring it. Look how big this punt is. This is like insane. Like I, could fit, you can like you could probably like live in there. Could you? Yeah, you could fit. Well, could he even fit in there? Nikolai definitely can. Mott, let's get going. The first wine, this is a huge bottle, um, comes from Sabragia. Now this is uh, Ed Sabragia, who was the longtime winemaker at Beringer and really built that brand. Um, this is the Sabragia family Chardonnay Home Ranch, uh, ninety points wine spectator. 20 US dollars, and I uh, was really curious to see what you thought about it. Now, what's your play on Chardonnay? We know what she thinks. Uh, you know, I haven't been a big fan of it. I think when I started to learn about wines and get my palate going, I, I still, I really had that burnt popcorn thing. Yep. It, it just, I, I couldn't get into it. And I you think couldn't I, get into I it. I couldn't get into it. Because for a lot of people, it is what they can most get into. Yeah. I think initially. <laughs> you're like, yeah, whatever. No, no, I no. no. I, I think you're right. When I first got into it, I was drinking like Pinot Grigio and stuff like that with Crisp, my mom. Right. Yeah, that was easy and whatever. Yep. But then as I, my palate developed, yep. I could taste that burnt popcorn and I wasn't a fan of it. I understand. So the, the burnt popcorn, how about the oak and the butter and all that all bothers you? N- not necessarily. I mean, the oak, not so much. Right. I, I like the oak. You like Monster? You like I, it? Yeah, I, li- I like the oak. But I'm not a big fan of... Uh, then some of the steel ones, some of the steel mm-hmm. line steel stuff steel. out uh, mm-hmm. out in uh, out in Oregon that we had tasted, um, took away a lot of that. Maybe it took away a lot of that oaky taste. Took away a lot. And did of you that. like those stainless steel Chardonnays? I did. I did. All right. Let's see what's going on here. Um, be very interested to see what you get. Let's give it a sniffy sniff. What are you picking up on the nose? Now remember, no wrong answer. Wrong! No, I'm just kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm I'm smelling alcohol. I'm smelling a lot of alcohol. Yeah, I get it too. You know, the alcohol is coming through on this wine. Are you picking up a little bit of like, you know, kind of like, I almost want to call it buttered apple. I mean, I get a lot of apple core on this this nose. How about you? I was going to say something. I was going to say butter, but then I... I couldn't quite place it. So when you're saying butter, buttery apple, that's more... Yeah, it's like taking a, an apple and sticking into a pot of butter. Yeah. And then biting it. And then smelling what you bit. And then licking it. Slowly. Right. So, I, I get that. Um, I get a little bit of a wood play as well. It's aromatically has a lot of things going on. It's not subtle. Um, do you like this or is this what bothers you about Chardonnay? No, this isn't, I mean, just off the, just off the, just off the sniffy stuff, I'm not getting, this is not what bothers me. Okay, so you like this or you don't? I do. Okay. I do. Let's give it a whirl. A lot of, Go ahead, say A lot of apple. Like, I felt like I, yeah, I just taken a big bite of an apple. Um, how about the acid on the back end? Do you feel that spritz? Do you feel the yeah. heat? I definitely felt like a... It felt like zesty. I don't know if that's a... You know, no, no, that's really good. That's fine. That's the acid. Here's where this wine gets very interesting to me. I've been wanting to try this wine because I've been hearing some really interesting debates going on about this wine. Um, let me ask you another question because now I'm just jumping in. Do you get like a... Now I'm getting a little bit of a burnt wood. You know, that burnt popcorn, I'm getting a little worried now because you know, I'm tasting it. Yeah, now I'm starting to taste it, but I have to admit, I, I thought I tasted that right away. I thought it was a little, I, th- I thought I got that burnt, almost like a cigarette taste right away. Okay. And then it, then it went away. Full. Yeah. Then it went away. Right. And now I'm getting a little bit of that burnt popcorn taste. So you kind of went like that. Yeah. With it. So where, where's this Chardonnay on your palate? For you. Remember, this is you. I mean, listen. No emotions. You know, I, I have to say, I, it's interesting to me. I, 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 now I understand, I picked this because I thought you would dislike it. Hmm. So, you know, what a great host I am, right? Like, hey, come on over. I'm going to pour, pour you something awful. You're going to absolutely hate this. You know what? But but it's I'm very curious because this is a producer that's known for that classic stuff. I mean, sorry, you're going to hate it, I think. But maybe not. And I'll tell you why. Here's where this debate came in. 
the classic flabby, oaky, over buttered Chardonnay guys, but with acid on the mm. back end, which becomes the really interesting debate of with acid, does that cut through those flavor pro profiles, make them more subtle, and become more of a food friendly white wine? I feel like the alcohol is a little high. It's 14.8, which makes me think it's even higher. Yeah. And I taste it on the back end. I do get that apple play, but as I'm talking to you right now and yapping away here, I still taste the acid, yeah. that zestiness you referred to. So is that what I'm tasting? I'm tasting the a the acidity of you're, it? I think you're tasting the acidity and the heat. Okay. Yeah, because I'm still getting yeah, it Yeah, because if you go, you know, you're going you're to get a little of that heat. Do you yeah. feel it? You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm still getting that burnt, sort of oaky popcorn Let's taste. give it one more shot because it was fresh on the palate. On that, right? Mm -hmm. It's like once you finish it, and then it gets pretty alcoholic on right the back. Right down end. the back, yeah. Definitely. Now, it's at room temperature, which is the big debate. I like room, a lot of people don't. Cooler, you would taste less of that heat. Hmm. Um, it's very round and flush. Um, it's an interesting wine. It really, quite, quite interestingly, is a real contradiction. Everything about it says over oak, but that acid on the back end really does get it kind of. Intriguing to me because I go back to something you always say on your show, which is expanding your palate. Right. Something you talk about on our show too, which is that you know, hey, get out there and try new things. I have to say, as a typical Chardonnay, this is not, and I actually enjoy this. So I enjoy. I think it's the. Acid. I enjoy the expansion of my palate during this. Wait till you see the next one. Let's move on. I'm going to jump in and say that you know, Spectator 90 points. You know, I'm all crazy about the heat and the alcohol uh, uh, and the oak monster and all that, but I agree with you. Ironically, there's something about this wine that does something right. I haven't totally even pinpointed it. It, it almost has like 89% California, 11% Burgundy, if you wanna really break it down for people that know what that means, meaning there is some acid minerality there on the back end. Like even as I'm talking now, I'm like, is that a mineral play? Like am I getting a little like stone action? Were you just thinking that same thing? <laughs> Telepathically I was thinking the same thing. Um, but it's an interesting Chardonnay and I agree for people, I. That's why I really, I wanted you to try it. It's got so much typical California play, but then it gets a little bit, um, little, little different. All right, let's move across to this. We're gonna go to New Zealand, Marlborough. Um, this is the Highfield 2006 Pinot Noir. Uh, very, very serious producer in New Zealand. Uh, the wine is uh, 92 points, wine advocate, 30 bones. Um, and I think uh, a Pinot that a lot of people have been talking about for a long time. New Zealand, in my opinion, is starting to make some of the more interesting Pinot Noir, but everybody always talks about the central Otago. is really the place where Pinot Noir from New Zealand is getting a lot of name recognition. This is from Marlboro, where Sauvignon Blanc is more obvious and powerful, and I'm excited about trying it for that reason. What is it about that region that's suddenly becoming more popular? The press. The really? press is writing about, I mean, it's, you know, this yeah. is, it's a, <laughs> Yeah. It's like, you know. Well, it's the same thing that's going on in Oregon. I mean, more people talking about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's Parker and Spectator and other people writing and talking about it. But there is, it is a very interesting area that is producing really serious wines. So much so I'm going there in late July to really delve into what what's going on with the terroir there. What's really going on with the growing season. They're very serious about their Pinot Noir in the central Otago. Um, but again, this is from Marlboro, which is more known for its Sauvignon Blanc. So let's give it a snippy sniff. Now, you're a Pinot Noir fan. Yes or no? I, yeah. I, well, I, did Willamette make you one? No, I was before. In fact, my wife... Sideways was, made you one. No, no, no. no. Sideways I, made you no, one. No, it wasn't. I, I promise you that. It, it was actually... It Your father-in-law. It was. Well, it was my father-in-law. It was, And it was the... When, her, when I first met her, one of her favorite wines was La Crema. Isn't it La Crema? La Crema Pinot Noir? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so she was a fan of that. And uh, so Did she I, drink it way too often? Every night. Mm -hmm. And like first thing in the morning. Right, and she'd bring a little. She'd bring a little thing with her during church too. <laughs> um, so, so, what are you getting on this sniffy sniff? I'm getting some light, light fruit. Okay. Yeah. I'm getting some real earth. He's smelling a lot, huh? It's very serious smelling going on here. Because before I, I would smell something and be like, I don't know what I'm smelling. Right. You know, and then I slowly started to figure out what the like subtle things I was I was sniffing. But I'm getting leather, I'm getting cranberry, and I'm getting like baby strawberries on the nose. I'm really getting the leather. 
Are you getting like leather shoe action? Like you go to men's warehouse and they like hook you up. Yeah. Oh, you're a dude from Fox. Have a pair of shoes. Like and then you smell it. Like freak them out. And I like to lick. I like to lick <laughs> leather shoes. I, like, I understand. I do, and I really feel that light, uh, the baby strawberry that you were talking about, yeah. and some of the cranberry. I mean, that's some of the lighter fruit that I was. Yeah, smelling. I thought that yeah. was what you were referring to. Let's give it a whirl. Be careful, Clayton. Did you just see what that wine did? You're like, where are you going with this? No. What do you think about it? It, it tasted like it went from a Pinot to a Cab. You feel Cabernet flavors? Yeah. Why? Some that maybe the uh, real earthy, um, deep, bold flavors. Okay. That's what it struck me. So out if you drank this by itself, you like, and just somebody poured it, you would think it may be a Cabernet? Yeah. Or even a Zin. Okay. I mean, I don't think so, but you know, that everybody has their own palate. What this wine did to me was on the nose, it acted extremely delicate, and, and actually, you were articulating this. This is a big ass wine. Yeah. I mean, this wine's not fooling around. It's like you're like walking on the street and you see like a four foot nine petite little gal and you're like, hey, babe. and then she beats the shit out of you. It's my wine. Well, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> we're gonna have to beep that much. Sorry, I got excited. Anyway, um, that's what this wine did. It was extremely yeah. subtle, and then on the palate, it exploded. Yeah. That's what I think I meant. Maybe I didn't articulate it well with the cab reference, right? but but yeah, I think that's where like, you were going was, with it. Del, it was like the the simple, uh, the, you know, the, some of the simple fruits, um, real light smelling to me, and then boom! I, I didn't expect that at all. I'm really feeling this effort. I think this has a lot of. Do you taste the cola play on this wine? Taste it again. I get a really interesting kind of cola play on this wine. Um, also, very like, you know. Maybe beef jerky, leathery kind of thing, all, all things brown kind of, you know, and very, very interesting cranberry flavors on the back end. I think it, it qu it's quite big, very big. Do you get the cola thing at all or no? Seriously. I yeah, get I, it I so can, much. Maybe it's a syrupy, yeah, it's almost like the syrupy cola side to it. I like this wine. Oh, going back to this, I'm going 88 plus on this. I'm going to go 92 points on this wine as well. I think, uh, the Advocate nails it. Um, I think it's a very solid Pinot Noir. It's very new world. It's it's exciting. It's bright. Um, it's serious. Yet, it finishes quite well. Mm -hmm. You like this or no? I do like, like it. Seriously. I mean I do it. like it. Uh, and and I, it does bring a lot of heat on the back end. Like, cause I'm, it's, I feel that on the back now that I've actually played with it a little bit more. I really enjoy this, though. It surprised me, though. I didn't think a Pinot would taste this way. Is it because of its viscosity? Like, how ser like bi the bigness of it? Did I enjoy it? Meaning, was it was it acting too thick for you? No, because I, I still feel like it's it's um, pr I don't know how to say it. it's pretty thin to me. Okay. It's it's pretty thin all around, but it has these it has this uh, strength right to through. it. I, I can't it's it's yeah I can't explain it, but it, it it's not it doesn't have that earthy tar like a uh, tar like quality. That yeah. You see. Okay. Now let's pretty up the show. Let me get her a glass. Get in here. We're gonna we're gonna. Slide in a little bit. I'm gonna get the glass. I get it for you. There you go. Slide in right here to pretty the show up. Yeah. And we're gonna uh, give her the big ass glass. <laughs> That's bigger go. than her head. <laughs> <laughs> so now let's tell us about your Willamette Valley. Now is everything he said true? Like your your family forced him to get into wine? And this yes. is Sarah, by the way. Yes, Sarah. I'm so sorry. Right. <laughs> yeah. Tell us why your uh, your family got into wine. Do you know? Um, I don't know. I think it's just that... Your dad wanted to drink? That, for one, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it's just, um, it's just a lot more interesting than the spirit side. I mean, everything in nature affects a year. And it's just there's a lot more culture behind it. There's a lot more education behind it. Are you saying that you had a classier family than Clinton? Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Just, that was, just, yeah. was a subtle wanted, way of saying that. I just really <laughs> wanted to like get that down. <laughs> Alright, so you guys went to Willamette. Uh, mm -hmm. What we have here, Mott, get you working a little bit to the angles. 06 Patton Valley, uh, Willamette Barrett, Pinot Noir, 92 points spectator, 32 bones. Um, very, very solid producer in Oregon. Um, what made you guys go to Willamette? We've never been to Portland. Yeah, we've never been to Oregon. Well, I've heard that um, you know Napa's kind of commercialized now, and Oregon is kind—it's of, still 
I mean, we, we would drive through these 1950s towns still, it seemed like. An hour to, outside yeah, of Portland. And... To get to these, you know, wineries. And it was just kind of going back in time a little bit. You guys made this a trip, like a wine trip? Like, mm-hmm. this is what you wanted. And we were, I was so interested, too, because I, we were reading up on it beforehand and trying to learn as much as we could about it. And, and then we would get there and go to places like the Spruce Goose or the Evergreen place. And, uh... I saw Spruce Goose. Yeah. Nice. Like, in Long Beach. Oh, okay. Yeah, and so they had the Spruce Goose. The guy, I forget his name, who runs the, the winery there, Evergreen, he put all this money into this winery with the was it French irrigation system mm-hmm, mm-hmm. because it's a flat and mm-hmm. they need to get the water off there. And that was, we were least impressed with that winery. All the money, but it was the four, it was a small place like Four Graces. And it was, it was the most fantastic. expensive. And yeah. it was our least favorite. Everybody has their own palate. All right, let's give this a sniffy sniff. That is a big I glass, s- huh? I like it. <laughs> you like Can it? Can I take it home with me? No. <laughs> I smell raspberry. Okay, I agree. Clearly we know who has the palate in the family. Mm-hmm. Um, That's right. She can even discern the different types of fruit. What are you getting on here? I'm just getting... Is it raspberry? Ras- I'm getting raspberry. Very good. Nice. Are you guys getting a little bit like... Like Febreze, like tss, like the stuff you have, like like I get a very chemical I just, kind. Of, it's spicy. It's like a spicy kind of a spicy. Like a Glade spicy. plug-in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like one of those Apple Glade plugins. No, but you know, it, there is a spiciness to it, and there's also, you know, I feel like there's a commercial kind of like cleaner in this. Really, I really do. I really smell like an over-the-counter product. It's not good. Well, it's yeah, not I can, you know what bad. I can smell? This is what it reminds me of. It reminds me of my grandmother's living room. Are you serious? Right. It reminds me of her living room with one of those like cheap candles that grandmas have. You know what? I I, I really can see that because it feels like a product to me. Right. Like, is that right? Like, yeah. Like, like I picture the candle too, and I can picture it in like a little belt in a little it's like jar. It's a journey. No, but you know what's funny is that this is exactly the kind of thing that I talk about all the time. I had a wine recently that smelled like Brian Chen's living room. <laughs> Brian Chen was my fourth grade friend. I mean, who's gonna pick that up? Are you being serious right now? I am being serious. I can That's almost awesome. picture her little bowl of Werther's Originals. Like, oh. <laughs> Next to the them. precious moment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's, uh, let's give this a whirl. Hmm. Talk. Raspberry up front and very astringent on the back. Okay. Yeah, I to really taste the alcohol and a lot of heat. Um, You've been sensitive to that all day. I have. I don't know why. Maybe it was the mesquite barbecue chips <laughs> we, had earlier, <laughs> we had earlier today. Um, I, I don't like this wine. Yeah, I can taste. It tastes like. It, How about I you? can taste that cleaner. I feel like there's not enough fruit. There's not enough flavor. It's right up front, and mm-hmm. then the rest is just astringent on my tongue. I, it, I, I agree with that. Tastes chemically to me. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on here, but this wine really falls apart very quickly. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. I think there's some interesting upfront raspberry, a little maybe cherry flavor profile, then quickly, and I mean quickly, fades to an oblivion. I mean, just, you know, kind of as like as cool as the OC was for about three seconds and quickly became <laughs> horrible. And that's what this did. This kind of pulled a Misha Barton. You know, I mean, it's a that's really, true. really bad play. I don't like it. I think it falls apart very seriously on the back end. And was it thirty-two dollars? That hurts. Yeah. It hurts your feelings, especially when you have like a again like a Four Graces for twenty dollars. When you were in Willamette, how many percentage of the wines did you guys like? Of the of the five wineries we went to, I think we liked. We liked. Two, I thought I was two. two. I would say two out of five. What about to say three? <laughs> he was well, no, because we was one. about to say three. He's like <laughs> he's like four. Well, actually, three, there, two. Was, there was one that I liked. That she didn't You really listen to her, don't you? <laughs> I do. Yeah, I have to. Yeah, I understand. So do you, man. <laughs> Lizzie's you know, uh, No, you know, Lizzie kind of lets... Man, she's probably tricking me. Um, So, and of those wineries, was there any winery that you liked every single wine from? Four Graces. Yeah. Before Four Graces, Graces, we really tried... set the tone yeah, for you guys. Their great. Pinot Gris was fantastic. Yep. Their Pinot Noir was fantastic. Yep. What else did we have from there that we liked? Did we have a Zinfandel? I feel like they didn't. I, I could be wrong that. about that. But um, they just struck you cold. Yeah, all of them. You know, the only thing that was redeeming at Evergreen, which had the you know the spruce goose, 
the only thing redeeming, and maybe you can speak to this, was the grape juice. They had a grape juice that they <laughs> that loved. That we loved. You know, I, yeah, I can speak to it. Grape juice is like, delicious. They're still back in the Prohibition era. Or something. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, I, I think that, you know, it comes down to, oh, here, you know what? I want you to try this while we're yapping. So, Clay, how many years now would you say you've been into wine? Look at her. I'd say four, maybe three and a half. And what would you what would you say has been the mo most interesting thing about the whole thing? <clears throat> Give it a try. It's almost like I, I, can I get to make a karate reference for you? Please. Because you know when you, it's like a Zen thing, really. It's like you know when you, let's say you're about to be attacked and you have no karate experience at all. Right. right. You're going to defend yourself however the heck. If I come at you right now, you're going to you just do whatever Poor, you do. I'm going to defend myself poorly. It, well, but okay. would you, you're going to grab a bottle. You're not going to have anything in your head about how right. you're going to defend yourself. Right. Then you start taking karate. Yep. And then suddenly you get into a form of like trying to, okay, now I've got to stand this way when I fight him. He's coming at me. Then you get to a point of being like an expert, so to speak, okay. at, at that level. And then you don't think anymore. Then you just sort of react. It's like being a quarterback in the NFL, right? Yeah. You know, you know I, I kind of, I, I like that. So, for me, I'm nowhere near the black belt level of wine right. taste. By a, you have a yellow belt, you think? Uh, maybe, maybe even a white with a stripe. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> so, I get it then. You know, you, sort of, you start to pick so up. You're picking up things yeah. along the way. What do you think about that? Oh, uh, it was much better. You like it? <laughs> it was kind of apple in the front and then grape and then it just tapered off nicely. And you like the of, finish? I do, I like this one a lot better. Very cool. Clean question of the day. Why is... You see what I like about Clayton, though? Sorry to interrupt you. He knows... He, he watches. Compared to all the people, right? He's a professional. He is also <laughs> a professional, but he watches. And I know he does. Go ahead. Why would Evergreen's Winery... <laughs> He's mad at Evergreen. I am. I, I was really pissed. <laughs> because of all the buildup of like, going there, you know, and just the money... The, oh, it's crazy. like The Wrestler. Yeah. I had so much buildup to watch that movie that I'm, I'm still mad at it. I was like that a little bit. But go ahead. I was with, with The Watchmen. Um... So how can you, here's a question, how can you put all of this money and all of this stuff into your Pinots out there, and still it ends up being crappy, and then you can make a grape juice from that same year, and the grape juice was amazing? That's my question. I'm dying to see how they're going to figure out the answer to this. You, with a little bit of me, we're changing the wine world.